Welcome to this record mode let's play for Total War Three Kingdoms. This video will highlight some of the differences between the two game modes, Records and Romance, which you choose from at the start of a campaign. We're going to jump into the Records mode campaign, playing as Gonzang Zan, and we're 150 turns in. Quite a lot has gone on since the breakup of the Coalition, so before we get stuck into the battle, let's have a look and see what we've achieved so far. It's autumn in the year 220 CE, 30 years since the Han lost its grip. We're making a healthy profit from our trade agreements and vassals, and because we have a non-aggression pact with Liu Bei, we don't need to spend it all on securing our borders, which has allowed us to save up some cash. We'll need this cash in our supply when we start making our power plays for Emperor. Now, let's look at our vassals. First, the Duchy of Song, previously Yuan Shao, has been our vassal for a while and is now weak since his death and his son is yet to come of age. We've expanded and surrounded this territory, making up the north of China, using the Yellow River as a border between us and Liu Bei, who now claims his lands as the kingdom of Shu Han. Our other vassal is Hang Chong, who recently pledged his allegiance to us after a short war which forced him to bend the knee. If we head down to the campaign map, we can see Gongsun Zan on the border of our territory neighbouring Ma Chao, son of the now deceased Ma Teng. We are within touching distance of the toolmaker resource of Anding, our first target, though Ma Chao's forces lie in wait, ready to reinforce. This battle will be tough, but we can take it, especially considering the characters we have in our force and the ancillaries they bring to the fold. Problems need an iron will. Gongsun Zan wields the strategies of the warring states, gifting his entire army guerrilla deployment. This will allow us to rush in on the garrison army, avoiding some of the tower fire on our approach. Next we need to equip the stone archer to our strategist, Jiang Wudai. This will give 10% extra ammunition to all the archers in our army, giving a slew of extra bolts for our repeater crossbowmen, which could prove crucial to our victory. Let's make our move toward the resource. Do not yield! Be unrelenting! We can see that the garrison force numbers at around 960, though their ranks are made up of mainly militia. They should be relatively easy for us to crush. Ma Chao, however, has much higher tier units, as well as being a more than capable warrior himself, so we will need to prepare for his reinforcements. Let's jump right into the battle. First things first, let's take a look at the map. This battle will take place in a toolmaker resource map, one of the many different types of resource maps in Total War Three Kingdoms, all featuring unique geography. We can see they also have arrow towers at the entry points to the town, so we'll need to get through those gates as quickly as possible. Now to our army. We have a well-balanced force here with two units of axe bands, providing good flanking ability, and four Jian sword guards, who will act as our front line for Zhao Yun's retinue. Gongsun Zan himself brings our shock cavalry, as well as three units of Ji infantry, which will help us take down Ma Chao's unique cavalry. Our strategist, Jiang Wudai, has brought two units of archers, two units of repeater crossbowmen, and two white horse fellows, Skirmisher cavalry unique to Gonzang Zan's faction. Gonzang Zan himself was known far and wide for his white horses, which famously kept the Mongols from attacking the north. Taking a closer look at the horsemen in his retinue, we can see that they all ride these famous white horses into battle. So here we are on the battlefield, and we can see that a storm has fallen on this toolmaker resource. Straight ahead of us we have these arrow towers, which will be our entry for our main forces. In the centre of the map, we have a capture point, this will provide a huge morale boost to our forces if we take it, so the enemy will try to defend this. First things first, we're going to move Gonsung Zan and the rest of our cavalry to that right flank. They're going to try and flank round this right side so we can break in as quickly as we can. We're going to get our axe band men and put them on the left side to spread that enemy force a bit thinner. And we're going to get the bulk of our forces and put them facing towards this central tower. Utilising our guerrilla deployment here, which is available from the ancillary we have equipped on Gongsun Zan, and moving our whole army within touching distance of the enemy. Every minute's going to be key here. We've got our axe band men fighting on that left flank, and we're going to charge our cavalry as fast as they can into that swordsman unit there. As you can see, everyone's in walk mode, that's on by default for me, and that's just so that we can save stamina for fighting, as the units will be less effective the more tired they are, and this has much more of an impact on records mode. As you can see, the range of fire for these repeater crossbowmen is much shorter, so we're going to move them up on the hill here to get a bit of a flank, and so they can shoot into the side of these units that are defending this tower. So we're going to get our axe bandmen charging on that left flank and get our swordsmen charging through the middle. Simultaneously, obviously our cavalry are now hitting this right flank and are going to melt right through those sword militia. Most of the units in this garrison are militia, so they're not going to be too difficult for, for our cavalry to deal with, as they are heavy cavalry. 
Will you confound them with your razor whip? And obviously our axe men are now making a charge as our swordsmen have in the middle. And these guys are really going to have it in for them because they are outnumbered. Really what they're doing is just trying to distract the enemy. Obviously with our shorter range of fire we've got our repeater crossbowmen on the right flank. And we're actually going to stop our heavy crossbowmen from fighting as they have a longer range. That will be much more useful later in the battle. So our cavalry have managed to defeat the two units of swordsmen and just have one unit of sabre cavalry which are going to be really easy for them to kill. So we're going to get our main bulk of cavalry on the right side and we're actually going to get our white horse fellows who are really good in melee to attack on this left hand side. Obviously they're unique to Gonsun Zan so we're going to utilise them in every way we can. Gonsun Zan going in wiping out the sabre cavalry nice and quickly. As we mentioned speed is going to be key for victory here. So as you can see, our repeater crossbowmen are doing some great damage on that front flank and we've managed to break through as they are retreating. So we'll move the rest of our forces through um, to destroy that last unit of swordsmen in the middle there. So our infantry are doing some great impact there. As you can see, our um, White Horse fellows have actually done a lot of damage to that cavalry unit, really outmatching them. And we're starting to break through now and we'll be able to kind of form up whatever defence we decide to choose. We're going to start Gonzazan moving down towards this melee fight, just in case we don't break through. As you can see, we've taken quite a lot of losses to our front line, with almost half of the units that have fought already depleted. So as you can see, we're breaking through. Our axe men are still fighting that left side. What we're actually going to do is get all of our range to move them up a bit closer so they're ready to come in once the fighting is done, and get Zhao Yun and Zhang Wudai to move up as well. We're going to get our G infantry to make a line up at the top and we're going to get our Jian sword guard to make a defensive line on this flank on our left which will defend our ranged which will also split out the enemy a bit as well as we need to divide and conquer. We're going to move our ranged units into the settlement now so they can begin firing and line up our men on this left side. Get moving! Warriors. Let's get our archers moving into the settlement to join the rest of our units who are now lining up and taking their defensive positions, ensuring we have secure flanks. Swords. Swords Swords Blades, Gonsu Zan and the rest of our cavalry are walking to the back of our defence here, ensuring they regain some energy. Being in walk mode doesn't recover as quickly as standing still, but will improve it slightly. Now what we're going to do actually here is get our White Horse Fellows and move them up round and try and get a flank on the infantry that are coming in with Ma Chao's army. We are also going to put our G Infantry into Spear Wall Formation and our Jian Sword Guard into Shield Wall Formation. This enemy Swordsman unit you can see here is a currently known bug. All of the exits around them are blocked so they can't work out where to run. We have notified Dev of this bug. So let's just put them out of their misery here. Your best is not good enough! Shut up and die! Cao Ling and Zhang Wudai giving each other some fighter talk there. Even though Warlords work differently in Records mode, they still interact with each other on the battlefield. So our White Horse fellows are just firing at some men that are still retreating, but what we're going to do is we're going to move them up around the top here, as I said, to try and get a flank on. As we can see here, Gonsun Zan is very tired. He's had his fair share of fighting already today, but he's not done yet. So we're going to stop them moving and get them to recover some energy. Now the unit has rallied and the AI is pulling it back to regroup with other units. We can reform our line into shield wall formation. And we've got the nice little bit of a rock face which is defending the center between these two lines of infantry we've got set up. We can now see the infantry are starting to make their way through up the top of the map if you look at the top of the screen. And we'll move our range a little bit closer and see what they can do. Obviously the axe bandmen are taking a lot of losses and we can't really get to them so they are a bit of a lost cause. What we're going to do is we're going to get our ranged units to give a bit of supporting fire. To battle! 
And now these white horse fellas are starting to take a bit of damage. So what we're gonna do is put them in loose formation, which is obviously gonna reduce the amount of damage they take and hopefully mean they can get a bit of a charge onto those heavy crossbowmen, which are stuck at the back. Now, Gonsig and his cavalry, they're now very tired, so they're getting there. They're getting, they're getting on the road to recovery. We'll just keep an eye on them and we'll, we'll use them momentarily. Um, these axe bandmen do a great job at defending that corner. The cavalry is still recovering, and the more we wait, the more impactful they will be when we find our moment to use them. The rest of our forces are in a good position, but that's only because our white horse fellows have drawn all the range fire away. We will need to start moving up soon. Our men flee the battlefield! It's really not looking good for these fellows. What we can see is the beginning of a divide between the enemy infantry and their superior ranged units as they are distracted by our white horse fellows on that flank. So what we're going to do is move our G infantry up to create a safe pathway for the rest of our cavalry to move around and flank their units. The G infantry will prevent any of their infantry from blocking our move here and we will put them into spear wall formation too to make them stronger. Our white horse fellows have managed to do a tiny bit of damage there Overall, their biggest play in this battle has been distracting Ma Chao's ranged units. Our men flee the battlefield. So our ranged units have now used up a lot of ammunition, uh, but what it has meant is those Axe Band units have actually managed to make it through. We're going to try and get one little charge off and try and just see what damage they can do, but unfortunately it looks like the arrow towers there are going to wipe out the remainder of that unit. So let's just try and get a bit of fire on the, the strategist that has just accidentally walked into our range. You are weak. Your words are as pathetic as you are. So they're still pretty tired, these units here. But we'll get them moving faster as we need to utilize this exposed flank. So we'll move Zhang Wudai up a little bit and we'll use the rest of this ammo with these guys to just get some damage into that cavalry. And they're now in range of our repeater crossbowmen as well, which is great. So they're now taking a lot of range damage, which is probably going to force them. It's going to force them to make a decision. They've either got to charge in or move back. Now our spearmen at the top there are taking a lot of damage from this range fire, so we really do need to get a move on. The men have no ammunition. Draw your weapons. Horses, stand ready. So we're going to put them into wedge formation to do a bit more charge damage, doing it as late as possible so we're moving quickly, as wedge formation does reduce our overall speed. So this is perfect. This takes out such a such a huge advantage for them. As you can see, one of their units, they've got such great range on them. One unit has already used all of its ammo, destroying some of our units. We're actually going to move the rest of our units up and we'll also put them in guard mode momentarily so they stop chasing any other units. Unfortunately, our heavy crossbowmen have used all their ammo. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to move up and try and try and put a bit of pressure on Ma Chao and the rest of his forces here. We're going to move the, the swordsmen and create a wall there, and we're going to use the heavy crossbowmen, which have used all their ammo, to just be a defensive line to prevent any flanking. And we're actually going to take a look and see who's got the most energy here. So I think it's, yeah, Gonsig Zan and Zhao Yun. And let, let our other guys rest and just regain some stamina before we go in for more charges. Because if not, they're just not going to be as effective in battle. While these two just mop up that. They're, they're again, heavy cavalry, so should be fine on these heavy crossbowmen. It is fun to watch you improve. Focus your efforts on the enemy, perhaps. The time has come. Take heed, warriors! Hold our steady! Our men are running! The spineless coward! So our repeater crossbowmen can take, start taking some shots at those swordsmen. Go. And we're going to use our heavy crossbowmen in guard Ask mode to try and defend this left flank um, so that our swordsmen don't get overwhelmed. Zhao Yun and Gonzo Zan have managed to wipe out that remaining heavy crossbowmen unit, meaning they no longer have any range left, um, which is obviously really great for us, as they were some of the stronger units for us to deal with. Unfortunately, our Raider Cavalry can go out of control and have done here. You are too pathetic to survive. 
I will crush you for this insult. And they are just charging towards the nearest enemy, which happens to be the swordsman, which isn't the worst engagement, but obviously we'd much rather keep keep our men in, in file, really. Look, the enemy run! Craven! Quarrels! March now! Our repeat of crossbowmen are actually out of range at the moment. What we're going to do is going to move everyone back into this shield wall formation and just push forward so we can try and get in range of Marchau and his generals there. So we're just going to take this capture point so we're not taking any unnecessary range fire. And our cavalry that rampage has actually come back, so we're going to move them back up with the rest of the cavalry. So we've defeated that that last unit of spearmen for them. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab these guys and we're going to move them forward and just create a nice line to, again, divide and conquer and block them up. So let's take a look at the lay of the land. We've got a lot of fighting up at the top, but we still have very secure flanks, which is great for us. And we're starting to box them towards where they wanted to go initially and use that to our advantage. Just like that. We're just going to move our cavalry out of there so we can fight as a group rather than alone. Prepare. Crossbows, attend. So I'll repeat the crossbowmen to manage to just get a few volleys off there, but it won't do too much damage. Now what we're going to do, this swordsman unit has quickly exposed itself. We're going to see if we can do some damage to it. See if we can kill it just before these spearmen get here. Uh, they're going to need a bit of help from the rest of the cavalry to try and get through as quick as we can before this bunch of spearmen manage to make it up to us. We're just trying to divide and conquer these, these groups, really, because we're overwhelmed by the enemy forces, so we can't really win if they're all bunched up together. We're just trying to divide and conquer these groups. We're heavily outnumbered in this battle, so splitting them out, we improve our chances of winning. The enemy unit flees! What cowards! And obviously the spearmen are trying to chase our cavalry, which we don't want. Hopefully we can get them out just in time. We, we hung on for maybe a little bit too long there, trying to get rid of that swordsman unit, but at least they did route, which takes another one out. And this does, again, we've boxed them in and we've, we've divided these swordsmen on the left and this cavalry from their spearmen. Uh, Marchau has now had to make the decision to move in. So obviously we're gonna, we've got our swordsman, he's riding into the swordsman, which do have a charge resistance buff because they're in that shield wall formation. But obviously that's not gonna be a battle they'll be able to withstand for too long. So now we're just going to line our spearmen up here um, because what we want to do is create a, a rear flank for our cavalry to charge into. So we're going to try and get all their spearmen to engage on us here. You are pitiful. Do not waste your breath. You will need it. Which means we can get a great rear charge off with our cavalry and hopefully route the rest of these units, meaning we can focus on the rest of the battle that's going on in the centre. Uh, we're going to get our cavalry to flank right back here because they actually might need to go support these sword units quicker than we think. Um, so let's get our range guys, make sure they're firing here. Um, it's tempting to move those swordsmen round, but what we're going to do is to protect our flank, keep ourselves secure, and make sure we don't make any silly mistakes. So Gonzag Zan here, obviously leader of the White Horses, is going to lead the charge here into the rear of these spin. Improved in my estimations. Here he goes. Great rear charge. None of them turned round, which is great for us. Meaning, um, obviously, we're going for a bit of a hammer and anvil technique here. The enemy warriors are running. We're using this heavy cavalry to try and route the units. One of them is gone. Three left. But obviously, our men are starting to waver themselves. Um, so we actually need to be quick around the situation. Their cavalry, another charge. Obviously, they're in shield wall formation, which gives them a bit of charge resistance. So hopefully those guys aren't dead. Let's go for our second charge. We go for a great, hopefully another rear charge and clear out the rest of those units. But unfortunately, it looks like they've actually managed to turn around just in time because that has done tremendous damage to both of our units. Take care, you are not trampled on the roof. Ready? Yep, we've been outplayed there. We managed to knock two thirds out of Gonsung Zan's unit out. And it looks like he actually might be retreating the battlefield, along with one of the units of spearmen. But yep, that's it. Gonsung Zan has decided that's enough. He's going to leave it to Zhao Yun and Zhang Wudai to try and wrap up this battle. Uh, so we've got the rest of our units getting in here, getting involved in the combat. Now, unfortunately, this does mean that if if Gonzaga does fully retreat, 
we do really need to win this battle because if not there's a percentage chance he will be captured now I unfortunately forgot to take them off skirmish mode there which means they were running away from the combat but I noticed just in time which means they can still get involved in that in that fight and defend that flank against the G infantry and we've already taken a lot of losses obviously Gonsangzan probably being one of the biggest ones but hopefully this battle is swinging in our favour as you can see it's still relatively even at the bottom so we're going to have to be, pick and choose these battles where we can but it looks like they're very much they're in our hand we've still got some ranged um, still got some range left we've still got this cavalry left a lot of their cavalry are bogged up in that fight there um, which they had to take as they were taking range fire but this has put ourselves in a great situation um, getting one final flank off on those swords units and we're actually going to push up to this victory point which will mean that we'll get a morale boost um, and hopefully that would cause, be enough to cause a chain route The enemy aren't looking in a great position now. It's, the balance of power is creeping up in our favour. We're going to get a charge off on these sword units. We can see that Ma Chao and Cao Ling are now starting to waver. They have unprotected flanks and we are now starting to take the capture point. Yep, that's it. It looks like Ma Chao isn't going to fight to the death. He's going to try and flee. What a coward. But of course, that's not what we want here. We need to take his life. The battle may be won, but we need to get him down. Zhao Yun has managed to chase him down with the remainder of his bodyguard and deal that final killing blow to Ma Chao. We can see here he's taking pride in this kill, which is going to help our faction rise to power. We can see piles of dead bodies and abandoned flags scattered across the battlefield. We've lost a lot of men today, but this victory was a worthwhile one. They are surplus, nothing more. Here we have the post battle screen, and we can see the losses we took. It was a Pyrrhic victory, but a worthy one, as it starts our power plays to becoming emperor. Obviously, Ma Chao's forces were absolutely decimated, and only a small force managed to escape. Everybody weighed in and got some kills, even Zhang Wudai wrapping some up at the end, even though he had a very supportive role throughout the battle. Looking closer at Ma Chao's army, we can see that him and all of his generals fell, which was our main aim. We're going to occupy this territory, and that will be it for this record modes let's play. It shows potential. And wisdom will follow. Thanks for joining us. And of course, Total War Three Kingdoms is coming out on May 23rd. So keep an eye out on upcoming content on our social media.